I was thinking about, in preparation for this homily, the nature of bamboo. If you really think about it, if you've ever experienced, when I was in Panama, it was really fascinating. We had like little bamboo areas where bamboo is very resilient, right? And it's very resilient for a particular reason, which is it's strong, it's sturdy, but it's also incredibly flexible. That is, it takes a lot of the strength that you might have of a traditional tree, but it combines it with like the flexibility that you might have from something that's a little bit looser. And that's what gives bamboo such a strength. And it has such deep roots that are interconnected. So it's connected with its roots, it's strong, but it's flexible. One of the things we've seen in this time of crisis with the coronavirus, and we see it in today's gospel, that is that the crowds, they're kind of loosey goose, right? At one minute, they're welcoming Jesus. They're like hailing him as the king. And the next moment, they abandon him. They don't have that firmness. And it's precisely because they are not rooted in God. They don't have those deep roots. They are not connecting with the Lord's presence. They're being blown about by their passions. They're being moved by fear and excitement. They're being manipulated by the powers that be. Brothers and sisters, I'm not saying that any one of us is necessarily doing wrong in this particular crisis. There's a lot that can be said about people and how they're responding. Some are good, some are bad. But the reality is, I've seen with a lot of people, nobody here in particular, nobody, thank goodness, here in Greenville, and I haven't seen this with our government leaders here locally, but there are many that in the midst of this crisis, their priorities have gotten way off. We see this a lot with Italy, where people are being denied the sacraments, that they are being denied that connection with God. The reality is, the sacraments are a lifeline. They are essential. We cannot abandon our Lord at this time. We have to seek that forgiveness. We have to seek to be nourished by the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm not saying that we break the law. In fact, what I'm saying is, is there's a middle ground between being inflexible and being completely blown about by the passions and by the fads of this time. See, some people right now, they're giving in to fear. They're giving in to paranoia. They're going well beyond what the government leaders are asking and what even some church leaders are asking. And then the other extreme is that there are some people who are being obstinate. They're being rigid in the midst of this crisis. The middle ground is to be like that bamboo. But the challenge is always though, is that it's precisely in our encounter with Jesus Christ that we learn to enter into mystery. Why did Peter fled? Why did the apostles fled? And it's precisely because the cross was unexpected. Many of us right now would be very comfortable with the idea of running out into the streets and like, you know, going, running into a burning building, especially as guys, right? Many of us would be comfortable with maybe fighting against an enemy, laying down our life. But the complexities of the situation require a kind of ingenuity. And that was what surprised Peter. He was ready to be a hero, but he wasn't ready for the cross. How do we become ready for the cross? We have to meditate on it constantly. We have to recognize our hierarchy, that the worst thing is not to die. The worst thing is to lose our relationship with God. We have to meditate on God's word constantly. And if you're coming to this celebration, if you're following along online, or if you're here present, and you find yourself that maybe in this examination of conscience that maybe you've gotten a little bit off track, now is the time to be renewed. Even for Peter, there's forgiveness. Even though he fled the Lord initially, there was always the opportunity for redemption. There's always the opportunity for forgiveness. That's the difference between Judas and Peter. Both of them betray the Lord, but Judas despairs. He turns in on himself. He doesn't use his creativity. He doesn't bounce back. Peter learns from his mistakes. So I would encourage all of us today, learn from our mistakes. If the ways that we haven't adapted well, let us adapt, let us renew ourselves, and let's be that creative ingenuitive that we're called to be. Of course, within the realms of the law, within the realms of what is being asked of us here in Greenville and North Carolina, I think there are some places where the expectations are in fact unconscionable, but that's a little bit different of a conversation. The reality is we have to always keep our eyes on the fact that Jesus Christ is the center of our life. He is our salvation. Listen to the scriptures. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world, but to lose his soul? We have to recognize that Christ has to be centered to our lives. Now, again, it says to be an individual discernment. I'm not saying that everybody has to run out and be courageous. Within our own vocation, within our families, within our ministries, we have to find how we're called to serve. Each one of us has a part in the body of Christ and all of those parts are important. If it's just staying at home and taking care of your children, that is sufficient if that's what you are called to do. But be aware that you have to be ready 
for the possibility of following Christ as the Spirit prompts you. So today, stay with Christ. Walk with Christ. Be a disciple. Put Christ first. Amen.